Hello and welcome to Big Friendly Grub. I hope you are safe and well. Now for some reason, banana bread has become the recipe of choice for people to make at home under lockdown. I have no idea why. I don't know why it's having its moment in the sun. Maybe because that moment in the sun is causing bananas to over ripen and therefore we're ending up with loads of overripe bananas that, which are perfect for making banana bread, which they are. Um, I wasn't gonna get on board the uh, whole banana bread train myself, but then this happened. Yeah, yeah, I've got some really overripe bananas. In my defense, I like my bananas really kind of like on the cusp of greeny yellow. That's how I really like them. As soon as they start going a little bit brown, I don't like them. And these, these have gone super mega brown because they got past that point and I thought, ah, I can't eat those. I am just gonna let them go brown and make them into banana bread. I will hop on the banana bread train. Even though these look dreadful, these are absolutely perfect for making banana bread. The browner the better, to be honest. These. Smells so banana-y, it's like getting slapped in the face with a banana. So these are absolutely perfect for banana bread. Now, to be honest, there's loads of banana bread recipes out there. You can pick any one of those and they'll be great. This one is mine, so if you're here watching this one, thank you very much. I'm gonna add a little twist on mine just to maybe make it a little bit different for some, some of the other ones out there. But otherwise, let's get started. Let's make some banana bread. Right, the first thing we need for our banana bread is 125 grams of softened butter and 175 grams of caster sugar. Then I'm just gonna get in there and Beat these up until they're nice and smooth and creamy. So there we are, that's a lot smoother, fluffier and paler in color. The next we need to add in two eggs, one at a time, beating those in each time. And number two. Yes, one-handed. Now those two eggs are beaten in and it looks lovely and smooth and creamy. So now we can get in our dry ingredients. So I'm gonna add in 225 grams of self-raising flour and a teaspoon of baking powder for some extra lift and beat that into the mixture as well. Be sure to get around the edges to get any loose bits of flour that may have crept up the bowl. Then add in two tablespoons of milk to loosen that mixture up some, because it's really thick. Now at this point, we need to add in our bananas because it won't be banana bread otherwise. Strictly speaking, it's not bread anyway, it's cake. But why it gets called banana bread? I don't know. But we roll with it or bread with it. Now I've got my three very ripe bananas in a bowl and because they are so soft and ripe, we can just mash them up with a fork. There we go, our bananas are all mashed up. Some lumps in there, that's fine. You want some chunks of banana in there as well. So now we can get this into our bowl and this is gonna help loosen up that mixture even further. Back in we go. Now to be honest, at this point, you put it into a tin and bake it and you will have wonderful banana bread. But I said I was gonna add a little twist to mine and here's what I like to do. I like to add some spice to mine. So I'm putting in about half a teaspoon's worth of ground mixed spice, half a teaspoon of cinnamon and half a teaspoon of ginger. Then I'm gonna quickly mix that in. Then I'm also gonna add in 75 grams worth of chocolate chunks here. And this is gonna create like a wonderful chocolate chip banana bread. The dark chocolate goes really well with the banana flavor. But instead of like the chocolate chips, you could add in walnuts. Walnuts work very well as well. Or you could just experiment, see what takes your fancy. Try white chocolate chips or milk chocolate chips. It's really up to you. Now with all that mixed together, we can get that into a tin. I've got about a one pound loaf tin here, which I've already greased with some butter. We can just spoon that into the tin. And just smooth down the top a bit so it's fairly even. Then due to the moistness of the mixture because of the banana, this needs to go into the oven at 180 degrees C for one hour. Right, it's been an hour and our banana bread should be ready to come out of the oven by now. Oh, yes. Look at that. That looks and it smells fantastic. But just to make sure, we need to do the old skewer test. So let's pop this in to see if it comes out the middle clean, which it has. Now we just need to leave this to cool in the tin for five minutes and then we can turn it out onto a cooling rack to let it cool completely or as long as you want to let it cool until you try it <laughs> which will probably be my case i'll probably leave it a little bit and then try it warm because i can't wait too long there we go it's out of the tin and looking great it looks really nice it's had about i don't know 30 minutes to cool because i'm not patient enough to let it cool down completely so i'm going to cut into this bad boy and give it a try because it smells great. So I'm gonna get in over here. I'm gonna take the end off. I won't be a heathen and cut straight into the middle. It's a way it's cutting really well. Boom, oh, there we go. Oh, that has cooked really nicely. Cooked, baked. And you can see those chocolate chips and everything in there. It's a really nice texture. It's so light. It is looking great. So I'm gonna get that onto a plate and give it a go. 
there we go one lovely slice of banana bread so easy to make as well so that's probably why this has become so popular during lockdown it's something that people can bake whether they're a newbie or whether they're experienced it really uses up old manky bananas Mankeys, not the right words, they are super overripe, but it's a brilliant way of not letting them go to waste because if you're like me and you like your bananas green and not brown, then as soon as those start going brown, use them to make banana bread. So easy. You could also maybe use them to make a banoffee pie, but that's a little bit more complicated, so I won't show you how to do that today, but maybe another day if you fancy it. But as it is, we've got a super lovely banana bread out here. I've pimped my one up with some chocolate chips and a little bit of spice, and I think that will add a little bit to it but even if you don't add those things it's brilliant or you can experiment add some warm nuts anything like that but i've talked enough i'm going to give this a go because it smells great mm. oh that is perfect just the right amount of banana you get that dark chocolate in there as well which adds a bit of richness got a little bit of spice there from the uh, spices that i've added in but it's just really nice you've got a nice crisp outside got a little bit of bite to it as well it's just really nice it's so easy so if you do want something to make that is super easy maybe make it by yourself maybe make it with your kids it is so simple and it is a brilliant way of using up old bananas so you can see why it's become popular during lockdown so if you do want to give it a go and you try this recipe thank you and let me know how it goes if you do otherwise that's another big friendly grub in the bag i hope you enjoyed it i hope you're finding these videos useful if you are enjoying these, you're finding them useful, you're enjoying what I'm doing, then give the video a like, subscribe to the channel, and otherwise I will see you next time on Big Friendly Grub. I'm gonna go finish this off. Bye. Mm -hmm.